Welcome to Wingate. Welcome home. The year was 1895. Families associated with Meadow Branch Baptist Church, what is now Wingate Baptist Church, saw a need to provide educational and moral training opportunities for their children. Their collective efforts were supported by the Union Baptist Association and approved by North Carolina's Secretary of State and resulted in primary and secondary level courses for 175 students. Those first classes convened under the supervision of Marcus B. Dry in 1896. A chapel, named after Dry, is next door to Austin Auditorium. To honor the former president of Wake Forest University, Washington Manley Wingate, the school's founders named the new school Wingate School, and they chose the town named Ames Turnout as the spot. A meeting room inside the Dixon Palmer Center pays tribute to the name. It turned out to be the right move, with ample land, a natural spring, and railroad tracks to support its growing population and their needs, it wasn't long that the town adopted the school's name, and both were called Wingate. More than 20 years passed before dormitories were added. In 1919, a boy's dorm opened. A girl's dormitory with a central dining hall followed in 1922. The school grew significantly in 1923 by adding curriculum and taking on a new name, Wingate Junior College. This allowed the institution for the first time to grant associate's degrees. The stock market crash in 1929, which led to the Great Depression, left hard times for Wingate and everyone else. An administration building, where the Burris Building is now, burned to the ground in 1932. It would take four years before a new one would be rebuilt. When it was finished, the new administration building was named in honor of President Craven C. Burris, who faithfully served the school for 16 years. Prior to becoming president, Dr. Burris was an alumnus, professor, and dean of the college. During his tenure, Wingate built its first freestanding library and gained accreditation by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. Dr. Bud Smith, a science professor, succeeded C.C. Burris and Smith's 21-year presidency from 1953 to 1974 was a time of great growth. Professors were encouraged to pursue the highest degrees in their fields, buildings were erected, and institutional relationships forged. Dr. Smith's wife, Ethel K. Smith, played a significant role in Wingate's development. Today, the Ethel K. Smith Library and the Smith Science Building anchor a corner of the academic quadrangle. Amy Odom, an alum and director of the Ethel K. Library, is often called on to share Wingate's history with groups on campus. People ask about the names of the buildings in the quad. These people devoted entire careers to Wingate University, and that is humbling to stand in, in the halls of that much passion. Wingate's friendship with textile industrialist Charles Cannon of Kannapolis, North Carolina, marked a new era in campus development. Cannon saw Wingate as a place where the children of textile workers and others in the middle class might receive opportunities in higher education. Over the years, Cannon and the Cannon Foundation have invested heavily in the school, contributing tens of millions of dollars to Wingate. The mid-70s to 1990 was the Quartz era. The school was led by two brothers. Dr. Thomas Quartz came first, followed by his brother, Dr. Paul Quartz. Wingate Junior College became Wingate College in 1978, and the school began granting bachelor's degrees. The Winter National Program was established, and campus development continued. In 1992, Dr. Jerry E. McGee was inaugurated as president, and to date, has held that title longer than any other Wingate president or college or university president in the state of North Carolina. During McGee's tenure, Wingate achieved university status, became a doctoral granting institution, enrollment tripled, and 26 new buildings were built. In June 2015, Dr. Rhett Brown, a two-time Wingate alumnus, became the institution's president, confirming the value of a Wingate degree. An official inauguration was held in April 2016, and Brown was presented with the presidential medallion. Our guiding purpose at Wingate University is to change lives for the better. Those who study here, who teach here, who labor here, and who live here. That is our prayer today. It's within this history Wingate's faculty, staff, and students embrace the cycle of the academic year and its benchmarks. 
Academia is marked with tradition, ritual, and of course, pomp and circumstance. Opening convocation marks the beginning of a new academic year. Students, faculty, and staff gather together in a formal setting as the president welcomes students to campus and articulates the importance of the honor code. The mace is an important part of that ceremony. The faculty marshal, the longest serving faculty member at the time, uh, leads the processional. You bring out the mace anytime the president is presiding over um, an academic event. Academic ceremonies are a time for faculty and graduates to don their regalia. Formal academic dress dates back more than 600 years. Gowns of those holding the doctoral degree are distinguished by the velvet panels on the front and the velvet bands on the sleeves. Hoods indicate the colors of the institution from which the degree was received, and the color of the hood's border represents the academic discipline in which the degree was earned. Medallions worn by faculty and staff signify membership in the Order of the Seal. These individuals have served Wingate University 30 years or longer. Perhaps the most notable, and certainly most anticipated, is commencement. In higher education, we use the term commencement rather than graduation to signify that a student is commencing or beginning his or her professional career or further scholarly pursuit. It begins with a faculty procession. Faculty form a gauntlet through which the graduates pass, allowing both sides a chance to hug and congratulate. of the alma mater. The song is sung at all official ceremonies and signifies pride, sentiment, and loyalty. It is Dr. Brown's hope that when you cross the Wingate University commencement stage, you will have both prospects and purpose. We want them to grasp that and know that all of that is possible because of the people who loved and continue to love Wingate. Welcome to Wingate. Welcome home.